Um, okay, so um, I'm Steve Atherton, and I'm here to give an update on the Redwood Storage Engine, which was it, which was introduced at last year's summit. Um, so there's uh, these are the topics I'll be covering. First, an overview. Um, then status on what's done and not done, um, some performance numbers, and then I'll talk about a, an important design update that was made in the past year, and then I'm gonna delve into detail on uh, I.O. patterns for some uh, operations that the storage engine has to do. Uh, and then lastly, I'll talk about future improvements um, in the sh uh, that are coming in the short term. Um, so a quick overview. So Redwood is a B tree. It's a B plus tree. Uh, it's multi-version, so it can contain different values for the same keys at different versions. And it employs prefix compression, both across nodes and also within nodes themselves. Um, it, it, the B tree lives uh, on a pager, uh, which is a stateful component. It is also multi-version. Uh, the pager provides read, write, and commit access to, f to fixed size pages by version. Um, uh, sorry, lost my place. I thought I had one more thing. Okay. Uh, so a uh, little bit on, on status. So what's done? Uh, so first and foremost, it works. Um, and it's actually been uh, shipping, so to speak, in uh, recent patch releases of 6.2. Um, it passes correctness testing. Most of the necessary functionality is done. Notably, prefix compression is done and is in final form for the, near fu for the foreseeable future. And deferred range clears are done and also are in uh, final form for the foreseeable future. Um, pretty much all the I.O. patterns um, are, are uh, where they need to be at this point. Um, so that all sounds great, so what's not done? Well, performance, um, mainly because uh, there are a lot of CPU optimizations that haven't been done yet. Um, and uh, actually earlier, Diego talked about uh, one of them uh, where the mutation buffer definitely has some, some performance uh, issues. Uh, so uh, also notably, B-tree node merging is not yet implemented. Um, you need node merging in a B-tree to reclaim accumulated slack space uh, that you'll get uh, within nodes over time by clearing keys. Um, if you clear an entire page or set of pages, that's great, but because uh, those pages will be freed, but if you only clear part of a page, you need to eventually reclaim that space. Um, also, the on-disk format may change, and no backward compatibility uh, on, on, the disk, on the file format is being provided yet. Um, so next I'd like to talk about performance. Um, so specifically pre uh, a performance um, with compressible prefixes. This avoids most of the unoptimized parts that still exist in Redwood. Um, so uh, I have a, a data set that is 40 million records. Each record exists under one of 100,000 unique prefixes, and each key has a random four byte suffix. Uh, the values are 32 bytes of random data. Um, the inserts are mostly localized uh, under one of the prefixes. Uh, so what, I, what I mean by that is groups of inserts um, are done together under one of the uh, unique, one of the 100,000 unique prefixes. So here's a big chart, and I'm gonna focus on just a column at a time. So what this column is, is saying is, um, here we've set our prefix lengths to three. So we have 100,000 unique prefixes that are all three bytes in length. Um, this produces a, KV, a key value uh, set size uh, as far as key and just, just the key lengths and value lengths of 920 megabytes, and we're using a two gig page cache. Um, this is very similar to what you would get if you were using the FDB directory layer and you created 100,000 directories. Your average uh, shortened prefix that the directory layer would give you would be about three bytes. So on this test, um, you can see that both SQLite and Redwood are around 1.5 gigs of used space. Um, Redwood loaded it a little faster at 116 seconds. Um, and both of the deferred clear time, which is the time it takes to walk the tree and, and uh, clear the entire, uh, and clear all keys from the data structure, is about the same. Um, so on the next column, we're gonna bump up the prefix size to 16. So this is, Pretend instead of using the directory layer, you used long descriptive names for every prefix. Um, so Redwood's characteristics haven't really changed. Um, it actually, everything kind of got, got lower, which is just a, basically um, noise uh, in the test. Um, but essentially the footprint and the load time and the, the clear time are the same. Meanwhile, SQLite has seen an increase in all three of those things. Um, 
we're still using a two gig page cache. And so everything comfortably, just about everything comfortably, comfortably fits into memory for both storage engines at this point. Then we move up to 32 byte prefixes, which are just more flourishy descriptive names on those same 100,000 unique prefixes. Um, and uh, again, Redwood's metrics are basically the same. Um, SQLite has seen a large bump in, um, in, in this space used. And uh, also notably that 2,855 megabytes is larger than the two gig cache. And so now there's a bunch of uh, cache misses happening. So the load time has gone up substantially and the clear time is 20 times higher. Um, and then uh, we, I did one more test, which is using the same exact uh, prefix size and, and uh, sorry, uh, workload shape as the previous one, but we lowered the um, page cache to only 100 megabytes. So uh, Redwood, again, is basically unchanged. Uh, the clear time did, get, did, did become four times longer, um, but it's still very small. Load time was largely unaffected. Um, and SQLite has the same footprint as before, but the load time has gone up and the clear time has almost doubled. I'll talk more later about some of the reasons why that is. Um, but the takeaway from this slide is that common key prefixes in Redwood are nearly free. Um, so moving on, I'd like to talk in detail about a design update um, that I made in the past year based on um, basically the, uh, the experience I had going down the path laid out uh, in the last presentation. So the, the, a quick review of the pager design. Um, so the idea is you can read or update or read a page at a version, and the pager would keep a page table that maps logical pages at a version to some physical page that contains the actual data. Uh, this table will be kept entirely in memory so that lookups are fast, and then it also must be periodically in some way snapshotted to, uh, to, or persisted to disk, like some sort of rolling snapshot, um, and it needs to be recovered on, on startup. Uh, so th uh, the goal of this design was that one page update equals one write, because basically when you update a page at some version, you put that data somewhere and then you use the page table to route reads to that location, so there's never a reason to copy that data anywhere else. Uh, unfortunately, there's some drawbacks with this design, um, and one of them is once a page is updated, one or more remap entries will exist for that page basically forever. So here we have on the left a table showing nine different versions of, of logical page nine at different physical pages. Once time has gone, gone on and we are only maintaining version 44 and newer, we only need one of these entries. Um, which sounds good, except for we still need one of these entries. And if you think about it, over time, almost every page in your storage space is going to be updated. And so nearly every page is going to have its actual data located at a different page from where it started. And so with something like two terabytes of space, you have a half a billion pages, page IDs, and um, if nearly all of those are remapped somewhere, no matter how you design it, you have, you have gigabytes, many gigabytes of memory being used for your lookup table, and then also being re, uh, uh, snapshotted, uh, persisted to disk, and reloaded on cold start. So this is very memory intensive, uh, and it's, it's slow to start. So the new design is what I call a delayed write-ahead log. Um, it's for shorter uh, retention periods, uh, and the, the pager is pluggable, so other pagers can be written. Um, the idea here is that one page update is up to two writes. So there's one write immediately to get your data to be durable somewhere, and then there's up to, there's up to an additional write later, which usually will be one, and I want to go through the sequence of what, of what that is actually referring to. So in the updated design, the page table has now has an implied identity record for each logical page, which basically says that if you look up a page at a version that is less than the oldest version in the table, then the answer is the same page ID that went in. So the, the physical page ID is the same as the logical page ID. So as older page, ta uh, as older page table entries expire, they are removed. So how can we do that? Well, so here on the second uh, graph we, or chart, we've advanced the oldest retained version to, ver to, to 22. So now we no longer need to keep um, version, oh, sorry, did I mess that up? I, I think I did, I'm sorry. Pretend that that is, uh, wait a minute. 
Uh, this completely threw me. Okay, the version on that might be wrong. I, I can't think about it at the moment. But um, basically, um, we want to remove the 9512 entry. Um, and we can do that by copying the contents from page 12 onto page 9. And then we no longer need that second entry. Um, so if you read, ah, uh, yeah, it actually is, sorry, it is correct. Uh, so if you read uh, at version 22 or 23, um, it will be, uh, the mapping will be served by the identity record and it will give you uh, physical page 9 and that is where that data uh, does in fact exist. So now we have only three entries left for page 9, um, which is nice. And then as time goes on, now we've bumped our retained version forward to um, version 44. Um, so now um, we do the same trick again, but with an additional optimization. So since we bumped the retained version forward uh, a, a, a large amount at once, we can actually skip over two of these copies because we really only need, need the latest version to be copied back to physical page 9. So we skipped over 23 and 40, um, which saves rights, which is why the last slide, sl the last slide set up to uh, one additional write. Um, and uh, so now we have no entries left in our page, in our, in our page table for uh, page ID 9. So next I'm going to talk about some I.O. patterns. So first, writes. Um, so specifically the reads to service writes. So SQLite um, does one tree traversal for every mutation in order. And so it, it incurs serial cache misses. So I'm going to go through a series of six insertions here. So we start at the root, we traverse to here, we go to this page, we have to wait for it to load. Oh, I'm using the wrong key, I think, so it's not, uh, it's not animating. Um, oh, are you guys seeing the animations? Ah, uh, okay, it doesn't show it to me here. Um, okay, so we're on our second latency incurred. We go back to the root, wait for this uh, internal node to load, and then wait for, for number four. I'm just going to go through this kind of quickly. I think you get the idea. Um, so basically, each of these seeks you know, had some stops along the way to wait for pages to load. So we suffered six serial read latencies to do these changes. Um, but in Redwood, we buffer and sort mutations for an entire commit. And then we do one parallel traverse or pull, traversal per commit cycle to all of the nodes affected by those changes. So the, traver and the traversal is not purely breadth first or depth first. It actually depends on what's in the cache. So we start at the root, and we start traversing, and we start loading these pages. We don't have to wait for them. We just continue on um, going as far as we can. Um, and we, now that all those are loading, we wait for them to finish. And then once this one finishes, there's some follow-on work. Uh, so it has to wait for these children to load, because we're editing both of these pages. And once they're loaded, then we've written our changes and we're done. Um, I'd also like to point out that let's say we had a bunch of changes during our, during our one second commit cycle. A bunch of different writes came in between the keys D and E. Um, all of those insertions in that range would be handled together at once, uh, which makes for very efficient sequential insertion on Redwood. Um, so now I'd like to talk about read latency. So with B trees, read latency is affected by branching factor. Ideally, cache size is approximately the amount of space you're using divided by, um, divided by your branching factor. The idea there is that every page, hopefully, in your cache points to branching factor other pages. So if your branch, branching factor is 20, every, uh, hopefully most of the pages in your cache are internal and they point to 20 other pages. And so in that case, if you had 5% cache to disk ratio, um, you would have most of the internal structure of your tree um, in memory. Um, so if you're dealing with, you know, say a two terabyte or a four terabyte disk, um, having to have 5% of that as a disk cache is, is pretty high. Um, so the higher your branching factor is, the lower your cache needs to be to ensure that most reads suffer only a single out of cache, uh, uh, a single cache miss. Um, so in SQLite, um, repeated key prefixes make the records inside pages bigger, and so they harm branching factor. Um, Non-trivial values, like larger than four bytes, also harm branching factor. Uh, in Redwood, values aren't stored in the internal nodes, and so that actually means that the keys in internal nodes don't need to be complete because they're not user keys. So they, act, they can actually be minimal boundary keys that are just long enough to, um, to, do, the, to do the left to right decision of whether or not you can go down on one, you know, sort of downward on the tree on um, one side or the other of that uh, boundary. Also, um, prefix compression means that there's no penalty for having repeat key prefixes in nodes. We get more entities, uh, more entries per node. 
Um, so I, I'd love to talk about large get ranges. So in SQLite, if we want to read the range G through K, we'll start at the root. Um, I'll just have to look over here. Uh, and we will traverse down to G. We'll wait for that page to load. Um, we'll read its contents, and then we'll go to the next page. So we're, this is our second uh, cache miss, third cache miss. So we have four read latencies to get this data. In Redwood, it supports a prefetch um, size. So in this case, we have 4K pages, and we're using a prefetch of 15K. So during the traversal, it'll recognize that 15K is not, or that one page is not enough to satisfy 16, uh, 15K, and so it will start um, four adjacent siblings loading simultaneously. Um, now I'd like to talk about oversized nodes. Um, so in SQLite, it's actually records instead of pages that are oversized. And they're actually oversized individually using extra ex pages called overflow pages. So here, if we want to um, scan C through E, we start at the root and we jump down to this leaf node. And we find as we're scanning that some of these records have these overflow page chains. So this one has one overflow page, we read that. Then we go to the next one, oh, it has an overflow page. And that, and that overflow page actually points to yet another overflow page. So we have three read latencies to read essentially four, four um, pages worth of data. Um, in Redwood, what we do is we just make these child pointers bigger. Um, so, so node links are variable sized, and a, and a, no, a child pointer um, has a node link which contains all of the pages that the next lower node is made of. Um, so in this case, there's four of them. So we, we start at the root, and we in, in parallel load all four of these pages that constitute what I call a super page. Uh, and now we can read C through E, suffering only one uh, cache miss latency. Um, so next I'd like to talk about, talk about deferred range clear. So this relates very closely to the previous slide. So SQLite must read every page in a cleared range um, in order to determine if any of those pages have, any, any of the records in those pages have any overflow page chains. So it has to read, not only read the pages into memory, but it also has to iterate over all the records in them. Redwood, because of its, um, because of its multi-page pointer design, doesn't have to read or scan through uh, leaf nodes when doing uh, range clears. So this results in in branching factor x less IO, which in Redwood is going to be usually way more than 100x uh, less IO. That is the reason why um, that third number on the performance slide was so good for Redwood, it, the, for, for, um, uh, for, for clearing all of the um, keys in the data set. Uh, it just has to do, you know, in that case, probably 150x less IO, so that's why. Um, which is also why uh, having a, a uh, 1.5 gig data set and 100 megabyte cache wasn't really a problem because most of the nodes that were needed for the deferred clear were already were, were still in the cache. Um, so uh, next, I want to talk about data movement. Um, so base, data movement in FDB is basically when you read a shard from one storage server and write it to another storage server and then clear it on the original storage server. So um, this is not a great pattern for SQLite because um, the reads. Uh, are, of, of the re reads of this couple hundred megabyte shard are going to push a bunch of data out of cache to do this one-time read, which likely won't be repeated. And then the write happens over time, and then we come back likely after a lot of those pages have been evicted from the cache, and we do the same reads all over again. And we pollute the cache likely again uh, just to, uh, to clear that data. So Redwood supports non-caching reads, which are used in this case and in, other, in some other situations too. And as we talked about it before, sequential insertion is faster and deferred range clear is much faster. So data movement on a Redwood-backed cluster of FDB is going to be a lot, is, is going to have a lot less impact on the cluster's performance. Um, so lastly, I want to talk about future improvements. Um, so um, first on my list <laughs> is to reduce duplicative write path mutation buffer lookups. Basically what this is saying is that there's a lot of extra lookups into the mutation buffer being done, really about 50x for some workloads. Um, uh, that uh, is basically because that code was written for a correct is first and not for performance, and I haven't gotten to fixing that yet. Um, but additionally, as Diego presented earlier, um, uh, his team is working on a replacement for the mutation buffer, which is currently just an STD map for convenience. Um, and so the lookups themselves are also going to get a lot faster, and, mo and, and, and very notably, the insertions are going to get a lot faster, as those need to happen you know, either way. Um, 
Also, the, the prefix compressed structure of the, of the um, nodes and the, uh, the, the, the overall tree is not being fully leveraged. There's a lot more byte skipping that, can be, that could be being done during comparisons. Um, nodes uh, themselves are currently always rebuilt by taking all the old data and the new data and building a new node. Uh, that also, uh, for small edits, um, no nodes could be surgically updated, which would be a lot faster for uh, highly random small writes. And there's also some single version optimizations that could be done for when you know you don't need uh, any version history. Um, so um, the uh, first production release of uh, Redwood is, is planned to be an FDB 7.0. It will definitely be a single version mode only. No history will be exposed yet, even though a lot of the internals are there. It should be faster for many workloads, but the worst case is going to be small key, key value pairs uh, with highly random writes that are with very little sequentialness. And that is all I had. <laughs>